My little beer torrent. It's, it's got a big brother. So, one of my main issues with the beer torrent, and it's not an issue with the beer torrent at all. The beer torrent's a lovely system. It's just that it's the 30 litre Ace, or the 30 litre Guten My Brewery, should I say, is that you can't do huge grain bills in there. Or at least you can do big grain bills, but not a big volume of a big grain bill. And I love Imperial Stout. Imperial Stout, Burley Wine, all these big ABV beers, I love them. So I could quite happily do a big Imperial Stout or a big Burley Wine in the 30 litre brewery. But I'll probably only be doing 10 litres of it. Um, those of you that know me know I keg. So I've got 19 litre corny kegs. So I like to get 23-ish litres into the fermenter. That way I get a full corny keg and a couple of bottles out of it uh, so that I've got a couple of bottles there to send out or whatever. So the 50 litre, in this one it's the Brew Devil from Angel Homebrew. Um, full disclosure, I did get a discount on this unit because it's dented at the back, um, but it wasn't free or anything like that. The neoprene jacket is a good addition for any of the breweries. I brew in outside, well, in an unheated garage. So when it gets colder, this will help maintain the temperature so that the element isn't firing as much and it doesn't take as long to heat up between stages. So I'm going to be getting one of these for the 30 litre unit as well. There's another thing I got. which is a whirlpool there so instead of the normal recirc thing you can pop that in generate a whirlpool whilst you're recirking whilst chilling or after chilling now i always recirculate whilst i'm chilling anyway i use an immersion chiller and i normally recirculate over that um what i'll be doing i'll be switching to that one just so there's a lot less splashing and stuff like that it will also help get the um, tube into a cone in the center so that I'm not transferring as much of it to the fermenter not that that particularly bothers me too much um, let's see if I can I don't know if I'll fit on camera or not because I'm looking at the back of it um, that doesn't really bother me too much there's been experiments done that tube doesn't have that much impact in your fermenter depending on the recipe being done etc so what's going to be first on that well the first thing i'm going to brew now just to throw a spanner in the works i'm actually going to brew a kit so the other day tube dinos did a review of the mangrove jacks kit which is bourbon barrel strong ale and it's only really nice. I thought I haven't done a kit in a long time um, due to various reasons. I'm currently not as mobile as normal. So just being able to bring a kit in and get me through the next couple of weeks until I finished with all my hospital appointments will be good. We'll be doing the Mangrove Jacks Bourbon Barrel Strong Ale Kit. Friday evening, I'm just doing a quick video. Um, I thought I'd show you these. I haven't done a kit in a long time. And I saw Tube Dino's doing a review of one of the ones brewed with this, the Mangrove Jacks Bourbon Barrel Strong Ale. So I thought I'd get one, give it a go. It's a limited edition kit. Like I say, I haven't brewed with kits for years, so I thought it'd be fun to try one for a change. But I just wanted to show you this because these are quite different. If you've brewed kits before, you're probably used to the big tin. Um, then you've got a cap on the top. Underneath that cap, you've got your instructions and your yeast. Um, 
now and again the caps will get damaged and unless you knew what you're doing you'll bring a tin home have nothing else but with these now it's actually all in there so instead of just being one pouch in here there's actually two so on one side here you've got all your sticky stuff on the front pouch here you've got dry ingredients so set of instructions what else have we got a new world strong ale yeast and some proper bourbon barrel oak chips in this one so anyway i'm going to knock this up i'm not going to film that you've all seen kits being done time and time again the only thing to bear in mind with this one is if i remember right it makes 14 liters so don't go diluting it to 23. Um, and then it's going to be into this bad boy with a big imperial stout. I don't know, somewhere between 12-14%, which will closely be followed by a burly wine. Now, I was going to be putting them into a barrel. But after watching some of the um, sessions from the American Homebrew Association Homebrew Con, I think what I'll do is I'll actually just use my normal fermenter and bung some chips or spirals in there until it gets the depth of flavour I want. Then take it off. I can put it in stainless then and know that it's not going to over oak or anything like that. That said, I do still fancy getting a couple of quarter refill casks from Speyside at some point and having one for clean beer, one for sour beer. Um, whether that happens or not will depend if I can find someone who wants to split shipping on a pallet because it's something like 85 quid for a quarter cask. Um, up to 200 I think for a big cask but it's then 80 quid ish for pallet shipping and on a pallet you can get eight quarters four big ones whatever so I mean if all I'm doing is getting two quarters for me then that 80 quid for the shipping makes it a lot more expensive if I can find someone else who wants to get a barrel or two that knocks it down to 40 quid, 20 quid, whatever, depending how much we're splitting shipping. And that makes it much more affordable for me and makes it more interesting. So we'll see. I just wanted to show you Beer Torrent. Yes, I will still be using it. It's a great brewery. No problems with it that I've seen. Done several brews on it. It's been great. It's just like I say, the 30 litre Guten Brewery. If you want to do anything up to about, I don't know, pulling a figure out the air, 7% ABV, you can do it as a straight normal brew in the 30 litre one and still get 20 litres out. If you want to do something that's 10, 12, 14%, and still get 23 litres out. You're either going to be mucking around with double mashing, um, adding DME, LME, sugar, candy sugar, syrup, some other fermentable to it to get the ABV up. Um, because in just a normal single mash, you won't get enough grain in there with enough volume to produce that sort of 7-8% beer. That's some of the things that have been happening here. What else has been going on? Uh, I've treated myself to a new hoodie um, with the Daft Cat logo on. That's come from Major Print and Embroidery in South Wales. Um, tapped them up to see what it would cost. And it was 33 quid all in 
a custom printed hoodie, including the hoodie delivery, vat man, everything. So from idea to my door for 33 quid, I'm happy with that. I'll put in a little video, which they did it just a time lapse of it actually being printed on the garment printer. So you can see that and a picture of the finished thing. Other than that, that's about it. I haven't been doing a lot of homebrew because, like I said, I've been um, restricting mobility recently. But uh, hopefully that should be changing in the next two weeks. It was supposed to be all over this week, but they started sending me appointments through for next week, which I wasn't expecting. So we'll see how it goes. Anyway, there you go. Let us know what you've been up to. I'd love to see videos of what you've been doing, what's been happening with your brewing. And drop us a note if you've used either of these machines, especially the, the 50 litre one. It doesn't have to be the Brew Devil, because I've never used the 50 litre before myself. So I'd love to hear your experiences with it. Cheers! <laughs>